It's a theory. It's a theory. It's a theory. It's a theory. We live our lives taking each second for granted, but what if we knew how much time we had left remaining? Oh! Whoa, what was that? That felt real weird. It was like I'm in some sort of trans-dimensional toilet or something. Oh, here I go again! Oh! Oh, this is... This motion is making me a little nauseous. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Oh, I definitely threw up a little bit in my mouth that time. I don't know who decided to put that spiral back there, but it was not a good idea. I, I am so sorry. I, I had deep, insightful things to say about death and existence and meaning, but I, I, I can't do it. Please kill me. Please kill me right now. Uh, how much time do I have left? Please check the clock. Oh, crap. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show trapped in the never-ending time loop that is YouTube. So, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss this limited time opportunity. Today, I want to talk about a channel with a much shorter lifespan, Unus Anus, meaning one butthole in Latin. Unus Anus is- Why does that not sound right? Oh, sorry, 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 typo, <laughs> critical typo. Two ends in that anus, I see, okay. Unus Anus, meaning one year in Latin, much better. Unus Anus is a YouTube experiment spearheaded by Mark Fishbach, aka Markiplier, and Ethan Nestor, aka Crank Gameplays. Now, as the name implies, the channel will only last for one year, and after that, it's gone. And all we'll have is the memories that we make along the way. And the merch. And I don't mean that they're not making new videos or anything. I mean, they are taking it all down. When time runs out, we will be deleting this channel and every single video on it. Right now, as I'm writing and recording this, the channel is actually slated to die in exactly one month. November 15th, 2020. It's my birthday, actually. One year closer to death. Speaking of permanently jumping off the mortal coil, it's no secret that this channel is going to be thematically linked to the impermanence of life and the inevitability of death, which is why its motto, Memento Mori, translates to, remember, you will die. But will the channel actually die? You see, true to most of Markiplier's other projects, there's an underlying meta story hidden inside of Unus Anus. Sure, to 99.99% of viewers, this is a channel full of hot chip challenges, slapping raw chickens until they're cooked, and pea saunas. You heard that right, pea saunas, steaming their own urine so they can sit and marinate in it. What does it mean when it's more foamy? I don't know what that means. I don't know, scientists out there, what does it mean when it's more foamy? Yes, all the scientists watching this. But peer through the pea stream steam and you'll see that someone is fighting back against the death of this channel. That there are other forces at play in these otherwise normal looking vlogs. Something that is much more serious and much more sinister than you would expect out of this sort of channel. And with less than a month before the day of reckoning, we have to talk about it now, or else, like the channel, our chance will have passed us by. It's not too late to join us on this journey. You can still subscribe, you can still like the videos, but sooner than you think, that statement will no longer be true. Oh, and uh, by the way, Mark, your pee is probably foamy because you had a full bladder and the stream just caught a lot of air bubbles in there. Or you just have extra protein in your urine right now. Just watch out because too much foam is going to be usually tied to kidney disease. Also, I am not a doctor, but as a concerned friend of yours, stop breaking your nose. Now, the first thing to make clear is that this is not Mark and Ethan in these videos. I know that might be confusing because, you know, certainly looks like Mark shaving his dog Chica and Ethan failing to do a Russian accent. Welcome to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, throughout the series, they're embodying characters other than themselves. Ethan is Unis in black, and Mark is Anis in white. There's a lot of evidence of this throughout the series via clips like this one. I've done bad things. Honest has done bad things. I've done things you wouldn't even imagine. You have made Honest extremely angry. Or here, where while playing games in the dark, the score graphic suddenly changes from soft boy and masochist to their character names of Unis and Honest. But really, all you need to do to prove this is to look into the description of any of their videos. Honest links to Markiplier, Unis links to Crank Gameplays. These are characters, which is why at the end of this channel's life, they'll canonically be able to die 
die, while Mark, Ethan, and their various other personalities like Dark Applier and Blank Gameplays live on. Throughout the series, we see these two characters contemplate their own mortality and the meaning, or lack thereof, of life. These moments often take on a different visual style from everything else in the world that surrounds them, usually shot in a more cinematic style, using a different aspect ratio, and usually with a higher quality camera. I didn't feel a thing! It's an empty void inside this glove. Wow. And inside me. Even in the middle of lighthearted videos, like painting Mark's body in gold to make him the eighth wonder of the world, can sucker punch you with a sudden dose of reality. Do you think that this is all just a vain attempt to try to last longer than we should? Is anything that we do, does that have a point? In the end, we'll all be dust. Also, internet's blowing up about Felix's new bod, but we're all sleeping on Markiplier here? Come on, internet. Look at that sweet piece of man candy. But lately, there's been an added element to many of these scenes. During the camp Unis Honest series of videos, we start to see Unis and Honest dying multiple times. The most obvious example is in the video How to Start a Fire Except Don't. Mark, looking to commit a sin great enough to summon fire from Satan himself, decides to kill Ethan. As he stares at his knife, Ethan's alter ego Unis stares in through the window. Just as Mark is in the process of killing Ethan, Unis walks away, and we cut to Mark and Ethan enjoying s'mores over a raging fire. Although Mark claims that he didn't have to do anything unsavory or sinful to get the fire going, the final shot of the video features Markiplier with blood dripping down his chin. Now, that one scene alone was so alarming that it caused a number of GT fans to immediately rush to our subreddit to start theorizing. But the thing is, these two characters have died many, many more times prior to that video. Just three videos videos earlier, Mark suffocates when Ethan abandons him. And two videos before that, they both die in a bear attack. And before all of that, there are these repeated scenes of horror and death. So what is going on here? Are they dying? Are they not? Are these imaginary scenes? Well, to understand that, it's gonna take some decoding. Watch this. Did you see it? Watch it again. There's a hidden code there. Yep, in the black screen at the end of the video, if you look really, really closely, you'll see that there's a faint outline of some sheet music hidden in the darkness. Crank up the brightness, and you see this. Well, it's, it's kind of a mess there, but luckily the same code appears in another video, Puberty Simulator. But the point is this, by the time this channel dies, there will be 365 videos, and hidden throughout those 365 videos are small little codes like this, barely perceptible. I mean, that is a huge amount of content to comb through. Luckily, the Unis Honest Lore Hunters Discord has kept meticulous notes over it all, which, without them, I would have never been able to gather as much evidence as I've had for what's going on in these videos. So thank you guys so much for that. You guys are all theorists out of my own heart. But it's in these codes sprinkled throughout the videos that we're able to learn the true story of this channel. Someone, or something, is trying to stop the clock. In the video, our fans try to scare us with their homemade creepypasta, there's a very, very brief flash of the following hidden in some static. What will happen if the clock stops? Could I find a way to keep it going? This sets up the idea that someone is trying to prevent Unis Honest from reaching its conclusion. From there, more hidden codes tell us about this person's struggles and progress. A month later, in a video all about making food for their dogs, the video ends with this graphic, and the bottom suddenly switches from a joke to yet another code. This this one reading, I couldn't stop it. Will I die with the machine? Three days later, we see this individual having some success. In Does This Magnetic Skincare Routine Really Work? We see this code hidden in the editing program that's shown on screen. With so many Y's and Z's, it has to be hidden in Polish, right? Or maybe Russian? No, it's just another simple letter substitution that translates to free, or so I thought. Another layer, but still the clock. So whoever or whatever is sending these messages, they're trapped in some sort of a machine, hence them worrying about dying with the machine, and they're under layers of security or layers of reality that have to be peeled back in order for them to finally escape. There's also some evidence in these hidden codes to support the idea that both Unis and Honest have died multiple times throughout this series, and heck, maybe even before the series was launched, only for them to have been replaced or rebooted. Going back to that sheet music puzzle I showed you before, each measure of music is its own word, and the different notes are all representing different letters. So translating the whole thing out, you get the following, quote, Happy birthday to the beast, or to the body that once housed me. A transfer made for pity's sake, tricked into the machine, as he has my cake. Again, we see a reference to this machine. Whoever this is, 
is, they were lured in and now they're trapped. It's also worth noting this line about the body that once housed me. It suggests that there's a separation of this person's mind from their physical form. Again, suggesting some sort of transfer of their consciousness into a machine, say a computer. A transfer made for pity's sake. It could just be there to sound cool or sound poetic, or it could actually be saying that their consciousness is in the machine because their body was no longer fit to physically survive. Like, say you were dying. To preserve your life, your consciousness gets passed into a machine while the body wastes away. That would be a good example of something done for pity's sake. And again, if you exist in a machine, there are any number of copies of you, which would be why we'd be able to see Mark and Ethan die multiple times, but then they're back in the next upload. There are two other secret codes that I should mention briefly, but don't have a lot to say about. In Ethan Roast's Mark for 15 minutes straight, we have this, quote, and in the comments, you will read the word. You soon will see our wise controlling pawns who type our deeds. That is Discord, not FaceTime. Within this truth, a question posed. Could the peace sauna be ever close? Now, this wasn't so much about lore as it was alluding to the fact that fans really wanted that pea sauna episode to happen, and through their comments, they made that upload happen just a week later. Hence that cryptic message about the pea sauna being ever close, and the comments basically willing it into existence. The same is true for this other hidden code in Learning to Cry on Command. Here, there's a cipher that translates to the long wait ends with 24 more for a path of destiny chosen before. And yes, this is yet another reference to the pea sauna episode 24 hours after this upload that video came out. Hence, the wait ending with 24 and the destiny chosen before was again the comments choosing this for them to do. But not all the codes are just about bathing in your own urine. I've saved what's perhaps the most important for last. If you go frame by frame through the ending of learning to use the force, you'll see words popping up around the screen. Kraz uv ov nafsom aukvum saidovko. One final simple substitution cipher giving us the message, wait, no, something is wrong, he knows. And it's here that things really come together, friends. You see, this coded message saying he knows confirms that there's someone controlling all of this. That there's some all-powerful entity dictating the lives of whoever is trapped in the machine, be it Unus and Honest or someone else. Look at this cinematic scene from their grip strength competition. It's from a mysterious third-party perspective watching the challenge take place. It's someone watching what is happening to these characters, like they're controlling what's going on. But here's the kicker. I think that we get to see whatever this machine is. In learning to use the force again, we're presented with brief clips of a CGI room with a computer on a desk. The walls covered in a black and white spiral pattern that defines the Unis Honest channel. We also see a lone shadowy figure looking out the window. I think this is the person who's in control. And that this computer room is his command center, his control desk. So with all of that being said, here's what I think's going on. I think both Unis and Honest are in a computer simulation of real life. They exist and and are one with the channel, which is why they'll permanently die when the channel's deleted. But until then, they exist in a simulation that can be repeated infinitely. This would explain both their repeated deaths, as well as those numerous layers that one has to work through in order to escape. It's also how past versions of Unis and Honest can visit key moments from their journey, like in the How to Build a Fire episode. The one ultimately in control, though, is Death. He's the one watching from a distance. He's the one operating things from his little computer room, and he's the one who'll be the final entity to push delete on this big experiment. As for who's trying to stop the clock, I don't think it's either Unis or Honest, but rather their editor, Mark, who, funny enough, used to be our editor and worked closely with me on the Markiplier Connected Universe episode that we did about a year ago. Anyway, why do I think it would be him trying to escape? Well, for one thing, he's a canonical character in all of this. Everyone from the editors to Amy are a part of the Unis Honest simulation. They're part of the canon, so any of them could realize that they're trapped. Two, all the videos the Discord has found with coded messages so far have been ones edited by him. Plus, a lot of those hidden messages have been a part of an edited piece of the video. For instance, the graphics package where they make food for their dogs, or the view of the editing software from the magnetic skincare routine video. And maybe most importantly, number three, his Twitter handle outright says that he's working from the inside to try and stop the clock. But here's the thing, whoever is trying to stop this, the clock will not stop. It would defeat the purpose of the channel. Death is inevitable. People, places, pets, they all have a limited time here on Earth. We'd love to extend that time. We'll fight to extend that time, but in the end, we all have to go. That doesn't mean that we completely vanish from the world, though. It just means that we become part of something else. A community, a collective memory, an echo of our reality, and no matter how small or how insignificant a life, they all matter, and they all live on in some way.
Or, you know, maybe I'm doing exactly what Mark accuses me of. They try to discern some weird cryptic meaning behind what we do. People are just overcomplicating the idea behind it. Mm. They, they're assuming that we put more thought into it at the beginning than we did. Hey, I'm not the one throwing coded sheet music into the final seconds of your dog grooming video. Just saying. It's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Like I just said, life is short, and there are so many darn good books in the world to read. So many people fighting to crystallize their mortality through the written word. So many Game of Thrones books. That That's it. There's just a lot of Game of Thrones books, and they're all so long. They're so long! Which is why I use our sponsor for today's episode, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. They make it fast and easy to listen to everything from audiobooks to podcasts to guided meditations and more. And with thousands of titles to choose from, Audible can help get your smooth quarantine brain wrinkled again like a Sharpe in no time. Unis Honest is all about making the most of your time, and Audible actually helps me make the most of my wasted time in the car by making it more productive and more fun as I learn and listen to audiobooks. Right now, in an effort to gear up for Halloween, I've actually been revisiting some of my favorite spooky stories from when I was a kid. Yes, scary stories to tell in the dark is just as scary now as it was back then. I'm looking at you, spider face lady. Oh, it is ter- I, I even just say the words and it terrifies me. Somehow, this story is actually creepier as an audiobook. It's like I'm sitting around a campfire with someone with a flashlight over their face telling me a spooky story, only I'm at home cowering under my blanket while Stephanie checks under the bed for monsters. So, you know, just like campfire. Audible members like myself get access to one credit every month, good for any title in their premium catalog, and they get to keep it forever. So when Ollie's old enough that he can have the same spider-faced fueled night terrors that I had as a child, ah, oh, memories, that'll be the day. Members also get full access to the Plus catalog, with thousands Thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, and more. You can get started with a free 30-day trial right now at audible.com slash matpat. That's audible.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T, -A -A or you can just text matpat to 500-500, because that's the fastest way to do things when we're all living in a mobile universe. Or, you know, click the link in the top line of the description. It is the easiest way to do it. You don't have to spell anything. And one final thank you to Audible for sponsoring this episode. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. I'll see you all next week.